Welcome to Camper Van Conversion in Bite Sized Chunks. If you happen to have come across this page through some random link, you might want to click on the link in the top right hand corner to take you back to the introduction to tell you a little bit more about these videos and how you can get the best out of them. So, water. Um, there's a few nuances around getting the water system right and uh, I spent a bit of time on it. Um, one inconvenient thing about water, split stating the obvious, is that you need a chunk of it and it's heavy and bulky and you have to store it and then of course you need to heat it. Um, so we put in a system whereby we had a 75 litre tank, it was an onboard tank, sometimes you, you can sling them underneath the van, we chose not to. Um, and you'll see why when I sort of show you around later on on the water system. Uh, the other thing is heating. Um, what I found a bit of a surprise when I got into this was that you can't seem to get combi heaters for camper vans. Um, you, they all come with a little immersion heater uh, that you, that, where the water is preheated. And that kind of surprised me because um, I remember my dad's canal boat had a combi heater but it was a big sort of bit of kit and I suppose it's it, you, you can't just get enough energy into heat the water on demand uh, in these small bits of kit. But amazingly a 10 litre water heater is fine. In, in, I, I've got uh, an ultra store uh, heater um, and in the instruction book they actually tell you how three people can have a shower with this 10 litre and basically what it is is you spend a minute wetting yourself over, turn it off, a minute soaping up while you're soaking up it's reheating and then I think it's two minutes that we're showering off and then turn it off and by the time you've got out, dried, and the next person's in, it's ready to go again, and, and, and you can get three people in. And certainly, you know, I've had I've um, had a shower and four and a half liters of water, a good shower, from my van. Um, so um, what I I didn't put a waste tank in my in my van. Instead, what I've done is I've got a drain that goes uh, out the bottom, and you'll see that in a minute. And I chose that I would have. Uh, a, a collector underneath and I use a fold up bucket. It was just because I couldn't get enough space um, in the van to, to have a waste and so I've got a couple of 5 litre disposable buckets and we use things like um, uh, Ecover wash out liquid so you can do your washing up in this sort of eco-friendly washout liquid and pour it into the bushes afterwards so, so that's how we chose to solve that one. Um, and uh, you know we'll, we'll take a look around uh, the various aspects of the fitting later, in a minute. But the key thing is it's water management. You know, we found when we started using the van, we very quickly got through water, and we were filling up. And in fact, at one point, uh, we went to ASDA and bought um, some still water in two liter bottles to fill up the tank because we couldn't find anywhere else to get any water. Um, beauty of Asda is you can actually buy tap water in bottles at 17p for two litres. Um, and that's what we did. We also decided that we were not going to drink from our system. Um, and there's no reason why you, 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 you can't, can't do that if you want to. Um, we chose just to have uh, water bottles, uh, tap water bottles, and we store them in, 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 in a rack in the en suite actually. You might have seen that in the... Um, in the design video and the reason for that was it's just the way we use the van because it's not just a camping van that we go out for two weeks and we drain it all down we're well, kind of using this on and off and you know we'll go out to maybe the beach or, or, or new forest and use it as day van but in that mode the water's not being used at a fast rate because we're not showering or doing, maybe do loads of washing up so consequently the water is standing in that tank for some time and we just thought, no, we, we, we won't use that for drinking. So we keep our drinking water separate, but you, you, there's no reason why you need to do that. The key thing, though, is um, waste management, sorry, water management. We found very early on from using our van that we could just use water really quickly. And that's what you'll need to get on top of. And that will be as important as working out what sort of systems you're going to put in. So, put it bluntly, if three people want a wee, it's the last person that flushes the chain. Well, flushes the loo. Um, you can have a great share of four and a half litres of water if you get it right uh, and when you've only got a 75 litre tank uh, that's important. 
So that's what it's about. Also, we uh, we belong to uh, if you go belong to the caravan club or, or a motor home club, they'll tell you where you can get water throughout uh, the UK at points. But as I said, we've actually had in one occasion resort to buying uh, ten liters of um, so ten bottles of uh, tap water. It's effectively steel water, but we know it's tap water from Asda. So that was uh, twenty liters, and that cost us one pound seventy. Just to start pouring this in the tank. Um, anyway, we'll take a look around and show you the bits of kit and how we've installed it and that sort of thing and the various aspects of it and hopefully it might give you some uh, ideas about what you want to do but the key thing is uh, whatever you do you'll find you'll be tailing your, your behaviours to, to use uh, water sparingly which ain't a bad thing really is it? Alright, so it's a picture of the back end of my uh, uh, vehicle um, you've probably seen a bit of this in the uh, in the introductory design video, um, but the, the water tank, that 75 litre tank, is in that bottom cover there, the one with the two white handles on. And you can see to the on top of that to the right, there's the filling point. So that's all inside the back door, so that's all secure. Um, and by the way, in that plastic uh, Tupperware thing to the left, you see inside there's a blue. Uh, actually it's a blue hose, it's one of those what they call them magic hoses, they, they just go into nothing and I've uh, got a bunch of different fittings there, a water thief and some different adapters so wh whatever the water fitting is I can, um, I can tap onto it. So that's where we store the water, right let's have another look at another picture. So moving up a bit there you can see a bunch of pipes, now I got all my kit from a company called uh, Magnum Motorhome, I might have, you might have heard me mention them before on this video, uh, this set of videos. Um, a very good company to deal with. Uh, details will be in the resource library. Um, but because I bought a kit, all, all the hose and everything came with Jubilee clips because I bought sort of loads of stuff at, at one time. So red and blue, hot and cold. Um, and you can see that's going in various places. It's um, to the right, the, the trail to the extreme right, that's going into the back of the shower pod to drive the shower. In the middle there, it's going into the into the hand basin, uh, and then it exits left through a bulkhead there and goes to another tee off where it's going to the uh, sink, and then of course the cold water pump, and also the uh, hot water heater. And we can see it clear if we just look to the left a bit. So there's that uh, waste pipe going up to the sink waste there, and the hot and cold pipes coming through feeding um, the uh, sink tap, you can just about see it on the extreme right there, uh, and then obviously uh, the hot, uh, hot, water, hot and cold water is going to the pump and the hot water heater. Okay, so this is the detail where the water actually gets taken out the bottom of the van from that waste system, and uh, you recall I don't have a waste on board, I have um, folding fold-up collectors that I put underneath the van to collect the, the waste and I store those folded flat on the inside of the on the rear doors. You probably saw that in uh, the overview uh, video. So you can see two exits there. Why is that? Well it's cock up confession time. Uh, I did say I'll give you warts and all, honesty. So um, the one you can see on the right there takes water out of the waste Sorry, take the wastewater out from the sink in the kitchen and the basin in the ensuite. The one on the left takes water out the very bottom of the ensuite floor uh, because uh, the design is you have your shower, there's no separate tray, it just rolls the floor slightly angled so it rolls, all the water rolls into the bottom uh, right hand corner and out through that point. Originally, I only had one waste point going through the floor, but I found when I let the water go in the basin or the sink, uh, the water would flow back in through that hole and into the floor of the ensuite. So rather than trying to do complicated things like non-return valves, that sort of thing, it would slow uh, waste away, I just put a second, uh, re re plumbed it to put a second uh, waste exit point in. So when you're designing your waste uh, routes, just bear that in mind, if water gushes down, it tries to take the point of least resistance, and in this case, it was the point of least resistance was going back into the uh, the ensuite. So in the uh, on my switch box, I got a water tank level. Uh, the sender is uh, in the tank. Uh, you, you just fit it into the top of the tank. 
and the cabling comes back and you just got a traffic light system tells you how much water you got on board. That's great. However, what I did find is when I was filling up at the back, I needed someone to keep on uh, pressing that button to see how I was doing. So I installed this as an additional uh, indicator for me. It's basically a float switch I put added into the tank, wired up to that LED, which is in the back of the vehicle, and I can see it as I fill it up. So you turn it on, the green light comes on, tells you the system is working. When the green light goes off, it means your tanks fill up and stop filling up before you get a flood. I did mention it before, we don't drink out of our tank because our, our use for van is that the, sometimes the water might be standing for a while. So in the ensuite, I've got that little rack there where I just store uh, drinking water. Those bottles cost 16, sorry, 17p for two litres and actually we refill them a couple of times. So we know it's only tap water in there. You shouldn't refill PET too many times. But that adds a little bit of storage capacity as well because we're not uh, using tank water for drinking. That's the controller for the heating system, hot water heating system. It's, a, it's a, a, both a gas or electric system. If you've got hookup, uh, you can hook up the 240 volt. Um, and actually you can use them both at the same time for faster heating. I'm not going to go into that now because um, there's a, quite a lot about this in the kitchen chapter of this resource. Um, but what I am going to do is post a... 50 five zero second uh, video summary that I made the day we switched on our water system for the first time. It's a bit of a red letter day that was at that weekend, and this is what I put up on my um, YouTube video diary. Hope you enjoy it. Water installation. Would I have done anything different? Uh, yes, and I have. So I kicked off by having waste dealt with by having uh, an outlet going through the bottom, back of the van and put a bucket underneath there, which then I disposed of in the appropriate manner. Thought that'd be fine, and essentially it was when I was sort of pitched up. But when you're traveling en route and you're pulling it car parks or you know, laybys, supermarkets, that sort of thing, you don't want to be having to get that thing out all the time. Now, I'm quite precious about this. I don't like wastewater going onto the public space. Yes, it's not, it's not going to do any harm. It's probably a lot more benign than um, uh, water from washing your, your car with shampoos that's got all these high sort of performance additives, all that sort of thing. But, you know, the community is sometimes getting a bit of flack, and I don't think it creates the right impression. My opinion, I respect yours if it's different. So... What I did in the end was to fit a waste tank, a small waste tank underneath that the water goes into and I drain out of that. It's not a very big waste tank but it does allow me to just deal with those situations where I'm stopping off en route and I just want to make a quick cup of tea, wash my cup out or just you know, wash my hands, that sort of thing, um, without any um, worry about waste water going onto public space. Um, apart from that, fine. I've got this little project in my mind that I'm going to try at some point find a way of recycling my grey water in that tank to flush the loo. Big motorhomes have this facility. There are sort of kits around but they're very expensive and I can't see how I could fit them in, into my van. But it's a project I've got coming up and you know you might want to think about that from, from the early stage uh, but uh, water is that thing that you always have to be careful of running out and of course you've got to dispose of it. Apart from that, nothing else to say about water. Yeah.